Hey guys, in this video I'll be covering hydrogen bonds, van der Waals forces of attraction. I'm going to compare between the two as well as covalent bonds. So stay tuned. First of all, what is a covalent bond? Let's look at hydrogen bond between water molecules. Water molecules have hydrogen bond between them, hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bond is a bond between, there's two things that are needed in hydrogen bond. First is a hydrogen uh, atom itself. A hydrogen atom that is bonded with a nitrogen atom, oxygen atom or fluorine atom. So let's look at water for example. This hydrogen here, these two hydrogens are bonded to oxygen. This is the first requirement. And the second requirement is there has to be another nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom in another molecule. So for example, this oxygen and this hydrogen. This hydrogen here is bonded to oxygen. So this is the first requirement. A hydrogen that is bonded to either oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine. And then we have oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine of another molecule. So this hydrogen and this oxygen. This is where hydrogen bonds are going to form. So the same thing happens here. This oxygen and this hydrogen also can form hydrogen bond because this hydrogen here is bonded with an oxygen. Either an oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine atom. And then this is an oxygen of another molecule. Same goes to this hydrogen. This hydrogen can form another hydrogen bond with another oxygen atom of another water molecule. Same goes to these two hydrogens, this hydrogen and this oxygen as well. So this is the basis of hydrogen bonding. There needs to be a hydrogen that is attached, that is bonded to a highly electronegative uh, atom. In this case, you only remember nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. These are the three most electronegative uh, elements. And then there needs to be another atom, either a nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom in another molecule. So there are two requirements here. If the hydrogen is not bonded to a highly electronegative atom, such as nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine, if it's bonded to carbon, for example, then it cannot form hydrogen bonds. Van der Waals forces of attraction is a group of forces uh, between molecules but this I'm not going to go into it in depth here at the IGCSE and SPM level it is not needed however it is quite frustrating not to know what it is when it, keep, uh, it keeps coming up throughout the syllabus so let me just give you a brief overview of what Van der Waals forces of attraction actually is so Van der Waals forces of attraction exists, let's look at methane molecules. It exists due to the attraction between partially negative charged regions and partially positively charged re regions. So let's say we have two methane molecules here. This cloud here, this circle here represents the area uh, which may contain electrons. Now this is the electron cloud theory which is not covered in SPM and IGCSE syllabus. So don't worry about it. We are st you are still learning based on Bohr's model, Bohr's electron uh, arrangement. So remember the electron arrangement in shells. Don't forget that. Don't get confused by this. Okay, just imagine there is a cloud of electrons here and electrons are moving in it. And then when they are moving, there will be one instance, a very tiny fraction of a second where all the electrons are gathered on one side. They are constantly moving all around the space, but at one instance, at one split second, they will all be gathered in one place. And this will form partial charge. So the place where all the electrons have gathered will be partially negative, and then the place, the other side, will be partially positive. Same goes to the next methane molecule. And this is the attraction between the partial positive charge here and the partial negative charge here. These are known as Van der Waals forces of attraction. This is the basis of Van der Waals forces of attraction. Not all of them uh, form the charges this way. There are several different ways where 
the partial charge can form but I'm not going to cover that here this is just a brief overview of what Van der Waals forces is all about so it's just a small charge partial positive and partial negative. it's not even a full negative charge because there's no full electrons going out of the molecule it's just all gathering at one space so it's a partial positive and partial negative so it's a very tiny charge but still there is a tiny charge so there is a force of attraction and this is why the force of attraction is very weak Van der Waals forces of attraction is a weak force of attraction between molecules this is what you need to know for IGCSE and SPM level <laughs> So let's look at the bonds that exist between ethanol molecules and in ethanol molecules themselves. So first, there is a cloud of electrons surrounding the ethanol molecule. So there will be Van der Waals forces of attraction. And remember, this is a very weak force of attraction. I want you to notice that Van der Waals forces of attraction is between molecules. That means between one ethanol molecule and another ethanol molecule. And then, since uh, ethanol has an oxygen oxygen atom and it also has a hydrogen atom that is bonded with an oxygen atom hydrogen atom that is bonded with either nitrogen oxygen or fluorine so in this case is bonded to the oxygen so it is also possible for ethanol to form hydrogen bonding with one another now hydrogen bonding is much stronger than van der Waals forces of attraction so this is the distinction here both Van der Waals and hydrogen bonding, they are both intermolecular forces of attraction, meaning that the force of attraction is between molecules, between two different molecules. However, Van der Waals forces of attraction is weak. Hydrogen bonding is much stronger than Van der Waals forces of attraction. So the strength of the forces differ. But also, go back to the basics, there also exists covalent bonding inside the molecule. So, within the molecule, intramolecular force of attraction. So, this is between the atoms in the molecule. This is not between one ethanol molecule and another ethanol molecule. If you want to know more detail about covalent bonding, the link is at the corner. So, covalent bonding is very strong. It's stronger than hydrogen bonding. It's about 10 times stronger. Okay, so between the atoms, these are covalent bonding. So, we have three types of bonds here. In When we have, and I have a beaker of ethanol. The first is Van der Waals, forces of attraction, very weak, hydrogen bonding, very strong, and these two are intermolecular forces of attraction between molecules. And then we also have covalent bonding, which is very, very strong, but this is between the atoms inside within one molecule. It is not between one molecule and another molecule. <laughs> So how do hydrogen bonds affect the melting point or boiling point of a substance? Now look at this, let's say this is a beaker containing ethanol. So these are all ethanol molecules. These are different different ethanol molecules. So there will be intermolecular forces of attraction between the ethanol molecules. So the intermolecular forces of attraction, remember there are two, that is the hydrogen bond and the Van der Waals. Now, Van der Waals is a weak intermolecular force of attraction. Hydrogen bonding is a strong intermolecular force of attraction. Uh, intermolecular force of attraction. So here, these are the Van der Waals or the hydrogen bonding between the molecules. What is melting and boiling? Melting and boiling is a change of physical state from one state to another. So melting will be from solid to liquid and boiling will be from liquid to gas. In both cases, the molecules have to gain enough energy to break the bond between them, to break the bond between the molecules and move further apart to change phase. So from solid, the solid particles are held together by intermolecular forces of attraction between one molecule and another molecule, in the case of ethanol. So you have to supply enough energy to break this bond here, to break the bond so that they can move further apart. Same goes from liquid to gas. Liquid to gas have uh, intermolecular forces of attraction. So there is a force of attraction between one molecule and another molecule. And you need to supply enough energy, enough thermal energy, in order to break the bond and move further apart. So that is what is going to happen here. 
So when the molecules, intermolecular forces of attraction is only consists of Van der Waals forces of attraction, this is a very weak intermolecular force of attraction. So it doesn't take much energy to break the bond so that they can move further apart and change their physical state. So the boiling point and melting point will be relatively low. However, when hydrogen bonds exist between the molecules, hydrogen bond is a much stronger bond. So it takes a lot more heat energy, a lot more heat energy needs to be supplied in order to break this bond. And so the melting point and boiling point will be higher, will be much higher compared to if there were just Van der Waals forces of attraction. So this is the effect of hydrogen bonding on melting point and boiling point. It increases it because it increases the strength of the intermolecular forces of attraction and therefore requires more energy to be supplied in the form of heat in order to break the bonds. Let's look at ethanol again. So ethanol here can form hydrogen bonds with water. They can form hydrogen bonds with themselves as we already saw but they can also form hydrogen bonds with water. Let's look at this. Ethanol has an oxygen and then it has water has a hydrogen atom that is bonded to an oxygen atom. So hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine. Then there is an oxygen on another molecule. So hydrogen bond can exist between ethanol and water molecules. This is the reason for the solubility of ethanol in water. If the intermolecular forces between uh, yeah, uh, with, between the molecules of a substance is only Van der Waals forces of attraction. It won't be strong enough to break the hydrogen bond between the water molecules. The hydrogen bond between the water molecules is very strong. So when you, uh, when you pour an organic substance inside water, organic solvent other than alcohol, let's say we have, a, uh, you will learn this later, if you have an alkene or alkene or oil, you pour oil inside water, oil is an organic uh, substance. So oil will not mix with water because of this difference in bonding. The bonding between the oil molecules is Van der Waals forces of attraction. But the bonding between water molecules is hydrogen bonding. The bonding is much stronger. So the oil molecules cannot break the bonding between the, hydro the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules to mix with it. But ethanol has the oxygen and a hydrogen bonded to the oxygen. And so it is able to form hydrogen bonds with water. So when you add ethanol to water, ethanol molecules can also form hydrogen bonds with water. So they will mix and therefore ethanol becomes soluble in water. That's it for this video guys. If you've learned something, please don't forget to hit the like button, share this with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.